Hi, my name is Payam Azadi and I'm an independent mortgage broker at Niche Advice. In this video, I thought I'll talk about the actual home buying process. I've got lots of videos and there are lots of videos about specific uh, elements of buying process, whether it's finding a broker, whether it's fees, whether it's lending criteria, whether it's mortgages, whether it's loan to values. But I think this video should really demonstrate the whole process as a uh, from start to finish because a lot of the times because I do this day in day out I take it for granted that people know what the processes are and I think generally most people have got an idea about the process but they don't actually know the step-by-step -step guide so here we go guys let's do a step-by-step -step guide hopefully you'll enjoy it comment and smash the like button if you can and I'll catch you at the video Right, I've had to record this three times now because the process is so long, I bore myself, let alone boring you. So I've tried to condense this down a little bit more because I seem to be going into more and more and more detail. I'm not actually sure whether you want that level of detail or whether you want me just to go through the steps. So I've decided to give you a little bit of information, not like, you know, boring you're gonna die sort of information. As this video can be quite long and there's lots of stages, I've put all the relevant stages with the keynotes so you can actually just skip across and go to the relevant sections in the description below. So check that out as well. So anyway, let's take it through there. Um, the first stage is identifying which route you wanna go down. Do you want to use a broker like me? Do you want to go down the direct route? Do you want to go to your bank direct? Do you want to go down a comparison site and maybe go with an online mortgage broker? That's really down to yourself. Do you want to go with an estate agent's mortgage broker? Um, that's a, I suppose that's a, you need to give that some thought yourself, whether or not you think people like myself add value to what you're trying to do or you know other, other, other mortgage brokers out there or whether you think you can do it yourself. That's really a personal choice. Um, the second bit is, you know, having to think about what you're thinking of buying. Are you going to go down the outright buy? You're going to buy the whole thing yourself. You're going to do a shared ownership. You're going to do help to buy. You're going to use any of the government schemes. Is it right to buy? All of that will determine probably your first step is how you're going to go and deal with this. Are you going to do it yourself or are you going to try to get some expert advice here? The next stage is depending on where you end up going and let's be biased. Come on, let's be biased and let's say you're going to go down the mortgage broker route. Not just niche advice, but a mortgage broker route, okay? Um, and the next bit is really the mortgage brokers kind of do some fact finding with you. Now that could be gathering some information from yourselves, having a discussion with you to find out you know, what's suitable for you, um, recommending a, a right product for you that's not just uh, suitable but also runs the affordability fits affordability fits lending criteria <coughs> and that's really where ideally a mortgage broker can sit because they can work across various lenders out there uh, and you know we'll, we'll be able to give you that suitable advice so then once they're happy that they've gathered all the information that they need they will re recommend a product to you a lender to you with a specific product at that time and I will just say for ourselves we also issue out a list of documentation that we will need to take it to the next stage the next stage is agreement in principle now you've got to be mindful here guys if the broker is not asked for a lot of information or the lender or whatever you see be cautious because uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is applications coming in how much do you earn fifty thousand pounds a year when you get the pay slips it's forty three thousand pounds or guess what when you get the pay slip it's actually thirty thousand pounds but they may have twenty thousand pounds overtime or bonus or whatever it is now that's seen differently by different lenders and often that's one of the reasons people get declined okay or not declined they just they don't get what they want in terms of the loan amount okay that's what a good mortgage broker does they will review these things not just from a I need to see your bank statements or I need to see your pay slip but does it fit that lender does it fit that lender that we initially talked about uh, where I recommended you now I've got your documentation let's have a look at it let's have a look oh my god I can see pension contributions here oh my god I can see a big student loan contribution that you never told us about oh look at your bank statements here it's showing lots of credit cards going out or loan payments that's been disclosed oh look at this you got some child benefit but I can't see any kids on your application form all of those things get caught out and guess what those are the declines that we see all the time uh, because of those reasons so you know 
get all the documentation in, make sure your broker is asking, see it as a positive that your mortgage broker is asking for lots of stuff, some stuff that you're not comfortable with, maybe stuff that you don't have, but see it as a positive. It means that they're trying to do their best to do a good job for you, rather than just say, fill in this form and we'll get it all sorted out. Everything will be done in five minutes. Guess what, guys? Nothing's done in five minutes, okay? If it's gonna be done properly, you gotta get all the information out there. Um, and, you know, it's, you can make things easy for everybody and you can say everything's streamlined and everything's great and everything's online. But at the end of the day, you're paying somebody, or hopefully you're paying some, say a broker, um, to, or, or you're using a broker for their expertise. And it's important you, you're open to that expertise and you, you give them the best possible chance. Anyway, you get your agreement in principle and that's basically just a credit check and affordability. So you can only get what you put into the system, okay? And that goes back to my last point. So you make sure that you've got all the information right, you've got it in the right way, you get the agreement in principle, and then you can then either go and complete on that transaction that you found the property on and go and actually to application, or you can start going out there and looking and viewing and documentations and so forth. Um, I've got so much more to talk about decision in principle, I'll probably do a whole video on it, okay? Um, and then you come back, let's just assume you found the property, you come back to us, we double check that it's still the right lender. Uh, you know, we might have got you an agreement in principle three months ago. So we double check it's the right lender, we'll look at the review, we we'll review the documentation again, because there might be a new rate, there might be a better rate, there might be a cash incentive, there may be a valuation incentive, there may be a legal incentive, and all of those things will help you save money. We have a look at that again, and then the application is submitted, uh, uh, sometimes valuation is inst instructed, um, sometimes they hold the documentation back and then instruct the survey. Um, so don't don't be fooled by if your survey's been instructed. Some people say, oh, my survey got instructed straight away. Yeah, well, that lender does instruct that surveys on applications. Uh, it doesn't mean that they, you know, they've looked at your documentation. Um, so be mindful around that. Um, but yeah, once the survey's done generally, once it's back after it's been done, it takes takes about 24 to 48 hours for the underwriters to review it. well for it to come back to the underwriters they will give it a review and if it all stacks up a mortgage offer is issued to you to me and your solicitor be mindful your solicitor's copy is different okay it's got more conditions on there so it's no good just saying well I've had my copy let me just forward that to my solicitor solicitors can't work from your copy okay so then the solicitors will uh, work towards you know dealing with the, with dealing with the property now you could have decided initially to pay for your searches and a lot of solicitors are, are urging people to do so because of all the backlogs right now with local authorities so you could decide to pay for the searches and it's a couple of hundred pounds however if the deal doesn't go through you've lost that money uh, or you could decide once you've got your mortgage offer to go for the searches to give you that level of reassurance but you never say never until you know until you complete on the deal but um, you get the searches and then the solicitors set up a date for exchange. Um, exchange happens. We, before exchange, do another review, have a conversation around your protection, you know, how you're going to keep up payments if, if something goes wrong. And more importantly, you know, talking about products like, you know, life insurance, critical illness, income protection, but more importantly around buildings insurance, which is the mandatory bit of insurance that you will need to exchange on. So we'll get, we'll get that sorted out you exchange and then normally there's set a date of around a week later for you to complete but that's really dependent on when you want to move in when they want to move out what's the chain look like but you know you can complete generally after about a week after exchange and then that's the only time i like it because i get a call i normally get an email from the applicants to to sort of say they've picked up their keys and they're happy with what we've provided uh, and at that stage so that's stage number 24 Okay, so any time before that, if the deal went through, and uh, so if the deal didn't go through for whatever reason, you changed your mind, they changed their mind, the property fell through, you don't pay us. So only at that stage, once you've completed, your fee to us is payable, and that fee would have been disclosed to you right at the outset. In fact, it's disclosed to you about four times during the process. Um, so that's the house buying process. It was a long, old, winded process. It's 24 stages, okay, from my uh, little bullet points here. I will put the bullet points in the descriptions and you can link to them. But um, that gives you an idea of what's possible. Now guys, I don't know how long this took, but my first version would have taken about four times or five times longer because I would have gone into every single little bit 
of detail around decision and principle, legal, why you select this solicitor, and bits and pieces. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to break those down, those stages down later on the individual videos. But hopefully this is giving you a good insight of how the house buying process works. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.